Good afternoon, this is Sybil Roscoe, Rob Roscoe on five. Thanks for being with us at the start of a new week. I've just about caught my breath after that extraordinary day raising money for children in need. Thanks for all your help, by the way. And in just a moment, we'll be hearing about the war veteran who survived the death camps of Hitler's Europe. When we standing in Auschwitz, I was very moved because I have very, very good friend. And they was arrested in 1940 in July. And in August, they were shot. We join an 82-year-old survivor on his journey back to Auschwitz, half a century on from the nightmare of the concentration camps. Roman Rodzjewicz is 82 and he lives in Lincolnshire and he's a survivor of the Nazi death camps at Auschwitz and Buchenwald. He spent two years in the camps, was beaten, tortured and saw many of his friends and comrades killed. Last week, he returned to his native Poland and to Auschwitz. It was, as you might expect, an emotional journey. During the Second World War, Roman was in the Polish resistance, and until his capture by the Nazis, he was just one of 300 Polish partisans. Roman returned to Poland a hero, with a hero's welcome from the mayor of Krakow. The writer and journalist, Malcolm Fane, was with Roman on his remarkable journey. We're up here in Auschwitz. We're right at the main entrance, the main gates. Above the gates are the words, work means freedom. Yeah. What do you think of that? Oh, it is... Uh, in Poland, Polish language, it is called parodia. It is liars, liars and liars. Because it doesn't matter how you work, how hard you work. Uh, this place, when they uh, uh, bring you to die. How would you describe your feelings now, st stood by this main gate? on returning to this camp that has so many horrific memories for you. Yes, uh, some, some very painful memory, very painful, when we standing opposite the uh, wall of death here, uh, near 11 block. I lost a few very, very good friends there. You've come back here to try and forgive. Uh, I, I, like, I, I like to forgive. I like to forgive, but not to people who special Nazi who done this but, uh, really you can uh, blame all nation in one way another way German is a very big nation we always think they are very cultural people you know and we hardly believe this time uh, and hardly believe now why they uh, don't so much feeling <laughs> Uh, we stood inside the crematorium at, at Auschwitz uh, there's a poem that means an awful lot to you would you like to tell me a little bit about it? I meet first time with this poem, 1943, when I come to Birkenau. And I don't remember, I think it is some Polish Jew gives me this. Accompanying Romel and myself here is 19-year-old Agnieszka Pazurek. Agnieszka, you said you'd like to read this poem for us. The wind whistles its woeful song in the dark and never-ending night. It plays a bitter tune on the barbed wire about the innocent suffering of men. The prisoners have sunk into a deep sleep, having used the last of their energies to return from their labor. Every day he would torment them, beating and scolding them. They sigh, tired and beaten, and in their sleep they cry from the pain. The cold torments them as it only can, in particular the sick. And then a young man deliriously shouting, 
cause his mother with what energy he has left. He explains something quietly to her, but this was his last breath. He passed away like the thousands who died here night and day. From them there is no salvation, and help is nowhere to be found. He dreamed so of returning home to his mother. She was all he had left. And then to his girl, with whom he wanted to spend the rest of his days. His life's dream has faded, never to return. All that was left now were his family's memories and his numb, lifeless body. He was placed outside the hut, alongside the others who, has, who had perished in the night. The corpses were loaded onto the train thrown like pieces of wood. They were taken to the crematorium. They were thrown on the fire. The smoke rose. The wind dispersed the ashes. It was over, as if they had never lived. <laughs> Roman, we've come to the middle of a forest about a hundred miles from Warsaw. Uh, could you explain to us what the, the, the monument is that we're looking at? This monument, it is place uh, where my, our officer, my officer commanding, was killed. What does it mean for you? Oh, it is, uh, means a lot. Of first, uh, sorrow, very big sorrow for myself, for my officer commanding, from my friends, and thus after the spear, why we lost him? It was brilliant man, brilliant man, a very good officer. Your memories of him are so clear after 50 years. Why is this? Don't know, because if you ask me, or oh, something could happen tomorrow or a week ago, I be, can't tell you because I think I forgot things. But what happened 50 years, I think it is too deep in me, too deep in my heart. This is a very special moment for Romal Drogevitz. We are entering the city hall in Krakow where he's about to be greeted by President and Mayor Joseph Lesotho. You're about to enter the, the city hall. I feel bit embarrassed, very humble, and uh, very happy too. Let us go in for your welcome. Because, because it is a big honor to go here and meet people what I will meet today. Krakow's president and mayor, Joseph Lesotho, paid tribute to Roman's heroism as a partisan by presenting him with an inscribed saber hailing Roman as a Polish hero. What one single memory do you take back to England with you? This moment when I received the president of Krakow, Saber. It was a very emotional moment when you received it. Yes, very, very. I have tears and I can cover the tears. You saw the ironic. Uh, I should... Uh, make some short, nice speech that I can, because something typic my throat, my uh, heart, ev everything. You know, you saw. I was crying and I was kissing this suburb. You have no regrets about coming back. Oh no, no, no. And no regrets about going back to Auschwitz. No, when we standing in Auschwitz, this in w this wall that. I was very moved because I have very, very good friend, very like uh, brothers really to me, and they was arrested in 1940 in July, and in August they were shot. I, I hope they shot. When I standing uh, opposite this wall, I have uh, no real pray to God, God, God. Uh, tell me they died here, not they go, not died some in barracks or outside, beaten, kicked by assessment. Roman Rodziewicz returning to Auschwitz.